before we start the video, I'd like to take a second and express a big thanks and special shout out to Bayside Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, located in Annapolis, Maryland, for allowing me to come out and film another 4Runner, a 2016 Toyota 4Runner SR5 Premium. Hey everybody, welcome back. It just rained, and I've got a rainy day video for you. This is a 2016 Toyota 4Runner SR5 Premium. Finished off in a white exterior with a tan soft tex faux leather interior. Does have your standard Toyota regular key fob. And uh, it's a little bit musty out today, so just ignore that. And I know you guys are gonna complain, Honda Accord guy, you've already done a video of seven forerunners. I'm gonna unsubscribe if you do another one, so please stop. It's okay, we all have addictions to something and I have two addictions, a Toyota forerunner Subaru Outbacks. Um, I didn't know it was gonna rain, so now I'm covered in water, so that's great. But this one does have aftermarket wheels and tires. It looks like this person must have ordered it online and had it shipped to the dealership. And it's a one owner vehicle, so, because it doesn't come with some of the stuff in this, because I it has options that regular SR5 premiums don't. So, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, but you're getting a lot from this vehicle. These are, 265 70 R17, so 17-inch alloy rims that are blacked out with, looks to be like a gold insert. They're actually really cool looking. And like I said, it's an SR5 Premium, chrome roof racks down the top, and you have, uh, looks to be aftermarket set bars. Unlocking the vehicle, this one does have a Viper alarm system that appears to be aftermarket, but I don't think that that's in functioning condition anymore. But like I said, SR5 Premium does get heated seats, and soft tex faux leather interior. Tan interior with a sunroof. Leather wrapped steering wheel, all weather floor liners. And without further ado, let's do a startup of the 4Runner. Looking at the key fob, you have your valet key, a little remote thing, and you have your standard Toyota key. Let's go ahead and insert the key into the dash. can never wait, uh, work the windshield wipers in any of these cars. But it starts up beautiful. You hear that four liter V6 come to life. This one only has 65,628 miles, which is low for a 2016 model. Has a four spoke leather wrapped steering wheel. With satin silver trim along here, Bluetooth, audio and phone controls. Very loud horn. Four runners of this generation since 2010, all the way up to 2021 through present day, have a five-speed automatic transmission with manual shift and sport mode. All come with a backup camera and a floor-mounted parking brake. Cut on the headlights, the fog lights, as well as the hazards. All four windows are fully automatic. They are tinted front windows. Let's go and check out the rest of this vehicle. Along the front, you have your standard SR5 front grille. The reason I say standard SR5 front grille is because Toyota likes to change the front end and the overall design of their vehicles based on the trim levels. If you look at the Camry, the XLE, the LE, and the XSE and uh, other models are different in the front end. They're very subtle changes, but they are different. The 4Runner is no exception. As you can see, this one is the SR5 with the standard SR5 grill. Honeycomb cladding in here, fog lights down below, xenon protector headlamps, halogen uh, high beams, halogen turn signals. You have your license frame bracket here, and on the TRD off-road models, this is a chrome slash like gray metallic color. It's really cool looking, but the SR5 does not have that. For the trim levels of this generation, we're just gonna go off the 16 model. The generation 4Runner, there's lots, so bear with me here. SR5, base model. 
SR5 Premium, one step above this vehicle. And we have TRD Off-Road. And we have TRD Pro. We have the Limited, the Limited Nightshade. I really hope I'm not forgetting everything because I know a lot about these cars. So um, one cool thing you can tell is if you look at these vehicles, the SR5s and the SR5s Premium, it does not say SR5 Premium anywhere on this vehicle. You can't not find it unless you look in like the VIN number or something. The standard SR5s do not have mirror signals and they don't have a lot of interior tech. Other than that, you really can't tell. I believe the SR5s don't come with a sunroof. Do not hold me to that, I do not know. I filmed the 2019 Forerunner SR5 about three months ago and that video sucked. I hated that video, I watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's terrible. I, it was parked in, I was like, so you know, see these two Jeeps here? Let's imagine this one was a little bit this way. The car was parked in, I couldn't move them. So we have a nice car here, it's ready. The SR5s, I don't think have LED brake lights. Along the rear, you can see the SR5 Premium and other trim levels has LED brake lights. This is also where your regular taillights are. And right here, I don't know what's right there. Right there is the reverse light. I think that's just a reflector. And your turn signal is down there. Halogen, halogen, and LED. Up top, you have four LED brake lights. Opening up the trunk. Very large trunk. This one does not have that little cargo deck thing. I never saw the point of those, but apparently people love them. They come out and you can put stuff on it and put it back in. I can see how it's very good for loading groceries. I don't personally see any other use for it. Now, this vehicle did come out technically in 2010, but it received a facelift, which is the model that we're looking at in 2014. This model is still in production with a minor update in 2021 with adaptive cruise control and different tech on the inside. Other than that, this car is the same as the 2010 model, just facelifted in 2014. Hope I'm not going too fast. Hopefully you guys can keep up. You can also fold the seats by pressing that little thing, but there's nothing back here, which is a shame. Like I said, back to the tech, there's nothing back here to automatically close it. It's a forerunner. They've always been this way. There you go. While I'm back here, let's show you something that I love. Forerunners have had this since 1984. Automatic roll down rear window. Bet you don't have that on your Nissan Pathfinder. All right, so there's a lot of cars that you can open up this piece of a window and it comes up like this. The Forerunner actually rolls down like a regular window, fully automatic. And if I get the key out, which I will show you because this is a Forerunner and I enjoy doing these videos, I'll, I'll go the extra mile for you guys. And I believe if you hold down Yeah, that don't work. All right, but yes, if you do it this way, your little window comes down. You have to hold it though. You can't just click it once it stops. This is great for pets. If you have like a baby tapir or something, that's fantastic. That was a joke. If you have like a golden retriever, they'd love it. And if you look over here, these are the vehicles I'm filming next. Booyah. I'm liking these rims, I'm liking those tires. Plenty of tread left on them. I believe they're probably 32s. 33s oh how dare you do that mr forerunner it locked good thing the keys weren't in it okay so as cnut says let's check the tech there is none <laughs> uh the limiteds do have a little bit of tech but it's no different than the sr5 premium but uh, back here, there's not much, but there is lots of space. You do get a nice fold down armrest with a nice wrapper. Looks to be from a granola bar, which is just awesome. It says a lot about the previous owner. If you look up, lift up this, very clean. They did a good job cleaning it. And fold this down. That is how your flat load floor comes out. Pretty, really simple. I did that one handed. The seat is very light. Headrest pops up. And if you ask, because it is an SUV, you can get a third row as an option on these SR5s. I don't know if the SR5s came with them. I meant to say Forerunner, not SR5. You can get a third row option on some of the Forerunners. I don't believe you can get a third row on the TRD Pro, the TRD Off-Road, or the SR5. I think you have to get it on the SR5 Premium or the Limiteds. Not sure, 
I have to look it up. But yeah, it's the same step for the folding. Everything on this door panel is soft touch except for up here, which is fine. But everything down here is uh, very soft touch, very nice. And I like the floor mats in this car, but you sit up very high. It's very easy to drive. I feel like every Toyota is just easy to drive. It's uh, If you get in some cars like trucks and stuff, obviously it's a different driving experience, but this 4Runner and other Toyotas, the Camry, the Corolla, etc., they're just so easy to drive. I feel like it doesn't take a master to drive it. For other cars, you kind of have to really be paying attention. And I don't want to say that you don't have to be paying attention to drive this, but everything's very simple and it's here. If that makes sense. Storage pockets with some netting here. Adjustable fans, which I do like that there is a fold-down armrest, a fan, and there is power outlets. Um, I would like to see if you could adjust this back seat, which you cannot, which is a shame. Um, the counterpart luxury counterparts of this vehicle, the Lexus GX460, you can get heated rear seats back here, and I believe these seats do recline. My grandfather actually just bought one of those, the 2019 GX460. Overall, very, very nice. Got your sunroof up top. Dome light. Crab handle. Side curtain airbags. Three seat belts for those rear passengers. Make sure they don't fly out when you're taking those turns. Stop locking me in here. Oh, it's got a child lock. Oh, come on, man. I'm a car detailer. I know every little spot. You ready to ready to see where they didn't clean? Okay, they did clean there. Whatever. Doesn't matter. You got to clean that. You got to clean that little gas cap. Along the front, it's just standard SR5 4Runner. But, hop on in here. We'll check the tech and then we'll finish off this review so you guys can watch a TLX next. Ooh. 79 degrees outside. I don't believe that. Let's see, it says 88. Yeah, buddy. So you make up your mind. Oh, right. So the brakes feel very light. You got to press it in there. All your warning labels, your seat belt so that you don't fly out of the car. Brake will go off if I press that. There it is. Fog lights, headlamps, hazards. We'll shut off those hazards, shut off those fog lights. And we'll see how this one sounds. That four liter, six cylinder engine. Red line's about 4,500 RPMs. Reason I know the engine in this car is you cannot get a V8 in this generation 4Runner. The fourth generation, this is the fifth generation, the fourth gen, you could get a V8. You could get a 4.6 liter. I believe it was a 4.6. Could be a 4.7. I think it was a 4.6. 4.6 liter iForce V8. Um, and that was only available for that generation. You could not get a third gen. You could not get a second gen. This third gens had a 3.4 liter, 3.4 liter uh, engine. So, and these ones have a four liter engine. The fourth gens, I believe, had a 3.4 liter or a four liter. I'm not sure. I don't know much about the fourth gen. But um, anyway, the tech in here, it shows my navigation screen, which expands. It's a little bit uh, laggy, but that's because this car's pretty old for today's standards. But you can type in a destination. I don't usually have to click twice. It's very responsive, but it is a little laggy when you're moving everything around. I don't know where it just set that navigation to. If we go to audio. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. No, I don't want route guidance. You can stop. Go to home. I want to shut this off. How do I shut this off? Destination. And you know what? We'll use the voice control. Okay. How may I help you? Cancel navigation. Your route has been canceled. Thank you. Appreciate that. That works perfect. So, I love that feature when it works. If it doesn't work, then it's stupid. We have your... $50 off, but you get... Radio I tune know. dial. Audio here. This car does have you XM satellite radio. Got that standard audio system in the old 4Runner. I believe you could get a Bose system in the other ones. It could be a Bose or a Harman Kardon. I don't know. I don't know about the audio system. I know one of you guys is going to correct me. I don't know what this is. I, I don't know what's supposed to be here. I've heard that it's a great place to store Chick-fil-A uh, sauces. That's cool. 
which is very appealing to pretty much all of the Americans buying this because uh, we're American, we like to eat. So, <laughs> 412, there's your clock. Got a nice horn. Tell those little guys to get out of your way. I'm gonna shut down this forerunner. For those of you saying, I don't see the point of a forerunner. It's old, outdated, and expensive. Well, you know what? So are you. You're old, outdated, and expensive. I like the forerunner, and I know a lot of people that do. My only gripe is that it is expensive. <laughs> this, this car is, I think it's 40 grand. <laughs> I think it's 40 grand. It's 40 grand new for one like this. Maybe 42. But you can option one up to close to 55. And they don't lose value. So this car is probably about $33,000, I think. But um, it's worth a lot of money, and they hold their value. They're extremely reliable. You literally can't kill these. There was a very small batch of fifth gens that had engine uh, transmission issues. But other than that, this car is unkillable. All four runners are unkillable. Pretty much all Toyotas are unkillable. So with that being said, here's an unkillable review of another fifth gen forerunner that I have done, and I hope you enjoyed. And like I said, that's going to conclude our in-depth tour in-depth tour on the 2016 4Runner SR5 Premium.